What is the purpose of language like people with periods or pregnant people? Why does this inclusiveness make me so angry? <laughs> Why is gender identity not provable and affects less than 1% replacing sex? Yeah, you're not alone. You're not alone. This you're being is, gaslit. Yeah, you're being gaslit. I will say, um, I don't know where all we're going to go, but I, um, Abigail Schreier, who wrote the recent book, and I can't remember the name of it. I should, I'll, I'll, I'll show it the next time we're on, um, about the rapid onset gender dysphoria that seems to be happening to teenage girls, specifically um, as, a, as a contagion in teenage girls. Um, she and I have just begun a, um, a letter wiki exchange about what is happening, specifically over um, you know, the, the focus she, she made the initial missive in, in letter wiki, um, about what's happening to teenage girls and, and what we can attribute these, this, these contagions to, um, with regard to like comparing them to comparing human females to non-human primates and, you know, what, what friendships among non-human primate females have looked like. Um, the, question more broadly of why gender identity is replacing sex is exactly, I, I think that's spot on in terms of the, the question that, um, why do we even call it, why do we call it gender dysphoria? This isn't gender dysphoria. Gender is the behavioral manifestation of sex. In every other species, gender exists outside of humans. It absolutely does. People who tell you it's a human creation, no, they're wrong. We call it sex role. And it is the behavioral manifestation that is typical for the sex that you were born to. So gender dysphoria, that's just like being a tomboy. But that's not what gender dysphoria, especially as understood by, uh, you know, by the psychological therapeutic manuals, is understanding to be. What, what they really mean is sex dysphoria. And calling it gender dysphoria is part of the confusion. Now, add to that people with periods and pregnant people. And yeah, this is, this is gaslighting. And it's regressive. And it's misogynistic. And it's nasty. And it all comes in this cloak of aren't we loving and inclusive? And no, you're not. Mm -mm. So no. why does it make you so angry? It's because you're being manipulated. And you're being manipulated by a threat. And the problem is, you know, um, Megan Murphy is no longer on Twitter because she insisted that men weren't women, right? How that's, dare she? That's a measure of threat. And the idea of, well, certainly you're supportive of trans people. Yes. Well, if you're supportive of trans people, then you're supportive of trans women competing in women's sports. No. Ah, transphobe. Okay. If you're supportive, Certainly you're supportive of Black Lives Matter. Well, I know that Black Lives do matter. Well, then you're supportive of abolishing the nuclear family, aren't you? Right. No. Exactly. So at some level, the idea that um, some men have periods, for example, this is no, designed to nope. out you. It's designed to get you to either submit or to say something that will allow you to be stigmatized. Mm -hmm. And the point is you don't have a choice outside of those. So, of course, you're angry to be asked a question where those are your two options. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's an attempt to categorize and stigmatize. Well, the point mm -hmm. is, look, I don't care which thing you say, right? Some men have periods, right? You know, and then it's like, well, no. Ah, fill your mode A. Yes. Mm, join the club. Um, so, okay, heads I win, tails you lose has never been a very good game. And mm -hmm. this is that. And so really what that. I'm getting at is... We are at the conversation that has no content, right? Mm -hmm. what, what is the claim that some men have periods except for a delineator of whether you are going to submit or uh, be hunted as a witch? That's, that's its purpose, is yeah. to get you to declare a side. Its purpose is not to assert something factual, which was, is what it sounds like it is. It's a factual claim that isn't a factual claim. So that, that's all true, and that may be the most... That's at least one of the most important pieces of it, um, but it is having ramifications in the real world on our young people that is going to create um, a significant fraction of a whole generation that is going to be extraordinarily damaged. I saw uh, I saw a picture in the last week of someone at some protest, presumably you know one of the protests that's happening right now that is you know supposedly about uh, police brutality and Black Lives Matter and all of this. The sign said. Puberty is optional. 
Puberty wow. is optional. No, it's not. Yeah. These people are so wrong. They are so confused. I don't think the person holding that sign was intentionally gaslighting anyone. They had been gaslit themselves, and they are unable to tell reality from, I don't even know what, a unicorn. Yeah. Well, um, the, the problem is this is all uh, part of a plan that involves de-individuating de you, um, distancing you from your family unless they're willing to come along and be part of the revolution. Yeah. And it moves through schools. Mm -hmm. There was a very interesting, disturbing thread. You can find it on uh, Benjamin Boyce's Twitter um, where a public school teacher was decrying the fact that COVID means that um, many of the conversations that would have taken place inside the classroom are now taking place in a, where you can't know whether family members might be listening in mm -hmm. and that this is a threat to the social justice work that this teacher believes is essential. And so really what that means is that there's... So I didn't, I didn't see this, but from what you just said, I can, I can see what you just said coming from a, a place of actual genuine care as an educator. Um, this wasn't that. Okay, this but 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 let's just let's just recognize that the idea that uh, teenagers want may want to be able to have conversations with people they recognize as adults who actually know something about the world, but not with their own, not within their own families, is you know the, you know being able to talk to your uh, religious leader. You know that there is a history of this that is honorable. Yeah, but no, this is captive audience. The point is, you send your mm -hmm. kid to school, and that puts you in the hand, puts the kid in the hands of somebody who then has them by law as a captive audience yep. to manipulate them and to tell them things like some men have periods and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, it's unacceptable. And your family has the right to tell you, actually, you know what? I don't know why people are insane, but people are now saying insane stuff regularly. And it is important that you retain your ability to think in a world of people saying insane stuff all the time. Yeah. And yep. the idea that this is going to be exposed because you may be on a Zoom call rather than in a classroom where mm -hmm. you're going to be fed the received wisdom uh, is, it's just creating, um, is revealing the depth of depravity that is unfolding in, in many schools. Mm -hmm.